Hello, everybody in YouTube land. This is Greg Stevens for Knickknacks, and I am joined today by Julie Wiseman Markovitz, an instructor in yoga, meditation, and Qigong based in Los Angeles, California, founder of Banana Moon Wellness, and she is the creator, producer, and on-screen instructor for the children's creative movement program, Kids in Motion, which is the subject of our newest episode of Knickknacks. Uh, Julie, thank you so much for joining us today. Oh, thank you for having me. So where did all this begin? How did you become involved with fitness and specifically children's creative movement? Well, my background is in dance. So I had, I had been dancing as a young girl, and then I majored in dance and child development in college. I, I went to California State University, Northridge. And so I had a double major, and I just had this epiphany while I was studying both dance and um, creative movement to go into dance education. And so in college, I started to, I had an internship at Hillside's Home for Children. It's a home for abused children. It was um, where I got, really got my start. It's the first place I ever taught. And um, it was very meaningful work. And I got hired after I finished my internship. And then I just went on to offering, and I created Kids in Motion, the name. And then I started to teach all over LA in churches and temples and health clubs and schools. So I was part of school curriculums. And then I was also, um, I offered after school enrichment classes. So um, that's where I got the germ of the idea to offer this to a larger population of children through, in either a TV show or, at that time, home video was booming. So um, I put together the concept for Kids in Motion, wrote it up, and it was a long journey before it actually got uh, funded and produced. But um, So it was about, I would say, from start to... Start uh, start of the uh, germ of the idea to start a production. It was probably about six years of out there pitching it, redeveloping it, and then it finally happened. <laughs> so the the kids in motion uh, itself began kind of like 1980, 81. Yes, that's when I was out there just teaching it. Yeah, <laughs> teaching, um, doing all the classes. How many classes were you doing at that time? Quite a few. I was in, I was, you know, supporting myself. So I was, I just, I would be like, oh, I need a little more money. So let me go to this school and see if they want to do it. So, um, yeah, so lots of, lots of different. I was at preschools, elementary schools, private schools. I was doing Kids in Motion birthday parties. I was doing a lot. I was teaching a lot. I was teaching every day. And then I would have birthday parties on the weekend. And what got your foot in the door in terms of turning it into a video product? I finally connected with a producer who was as passionate about it as I was. And because I had never produced anything. And, and he was doing, his name is George Page. And he was producing the Mickey Mouse Club. And he just said, I love this. Let's do it. And I'm telling you, it was like boom, boom, boom. It was like the second I connected with him, everything fell into place. So um, it was pretty exciting. He, he just um, started making calls. We got CBS Fox Playhouse video on board. And they were like, yeah, we'll do this. Just get us a, a star to, to be the host. That was Scott Bayo. They approved him. And then uh, we need a major uh, musical act to do your title song. And so then George had been working with The Temptations on a Motown special and, and they go, yeah, we'll do it. And so our, I had a couple friends who were singer songwriters and they wrote the Kids in Motion song. That's um, Lowen and Navarro. That's what they're known as. Um, that's their, their name of their group. And unfortunately, um, Eric Lone has passed away, but um, Dan is still out there and he wrote this big hit song back then for um, Pat Benatar, We Belong. So it was really a big deal. Like, whoa, you got Dan Navarro to write your theme song. So yeah, the Kids in Motion theme song is so special. Um, yeah, so we did it. And then KCT, our public broadcasting channel in LA, um, gave us their studio space. 
and uh, we shot it there. Uh, how long was shooting? Eh, gosh, it was probably because you know we had children and we had two we had two different groups of children. A couple weeks. It was a couple weeks. And how were the children that appeared on camera? How were they selected? Oh gosh, a lot of them were students of mine. I, as a matter of fact, most of them were students of mine. And then some were children of, so we had Greg and Steve as the music producers, and they were very big and still are in the children's music world. So their children are on it as well. <laughs> and then the director, uh, our director's child was in it. They were just regular kids. They weren't actors. Right. Uh, how long was uh, Scott Bayo on set? Because uh, watching the, the footage, I get the impression he's kind of separated from a lot of the actual exercises. Exactly. We had him on set one day. <laughs> you also have the Temptations appear on camera. Were they also just a, a one-day shoot? Exactly. Did you get to meet them? Oh, yeah. That was beautiful. So you filmed two tapes. Is that correct? Exactly. Was it all part of one production, or and you split into two tapes, or did you do two productions? We did. We all we did it all together. And uh, how well did the tapes do? How well did they sell and re get received? You know, they did really, really well. Um, we 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 were kind of a small fish in a big pond as far as um, programming is concerned because it wasn't like based on a a well-known toy or character, but it was so well received because it was entertaining and educational. So it, it, I mean, I was a lot, I got a lot of publicity. I was on the Today Show, um, was reviewed by the Chicago Tribune, LA Times, Shape Magazine did a piece on us. Uh, we, we earned the um, Action for Children's Television Award, Parents' Choice Award. We were endorsed by the American Academy of Pediatrics. Um, at that time, Good Housekeeping, too, was big. We had the Good Housekeeping Seal of Approval. Uh, and, um, and then I mentioned the billboard um, earlier when you and I were just talking. That Bill, we were up for best video against Sherry Lewis lamp shop and um I, it was just a total honor to be uh, as far as I mentioned. so how, how do you feel kids in motion fit into the the larger market for products around because there was a lot of exercise tapes there were a lot of fitness tapes uh even for children like this was around the time disney was doing mouser size do you feel like kids in motion offered something that a lot of other products didn't i do um and I, I, you know, I'm still teaching. You can, you, you can see me in the background here. I have this, all the, I have a colorful set since we're in the pandemic right now. I've been teaching everything online. And I think that the secret ingredient, like that has been part of Kids in Motion and still is, is just its authenticity. It's not, it's not commercial, overly commercialized, um, if you understand what I'm saying. It mm -hmm. really celebrates a child's world and what children are fascinated and interested in, fascinated by, interested in, curious about, and um, celebrates their own individuality. So it was, and if you look at the Kids in Motion videos, each one, each song, and, and each dance, the children are all moving the way they naturally want to, to move and and that still happens in my classes today so i'll be teaching something and they're going to express a concept in their own individual and creative way so it's very authentic and it really honors them as in, as individuals yeah i definitely noticed that when when watching the uh, the tapes that it was it's much more a product about expression than it is about exercise. Or, it's, it's just an added, it's like, oh yeah, they're getting exercise, you know, but that, <laughs> that's, it's much more than that. It's much deeper than that. Uh, do you recall how Kids in Motion found its way onto Nickelodeon? Yes. Um, we had uh, conversations with Jerry Laybourne and she, she loved it. And she she wanted to um, 
do interstitials and, and it lent itself so perfectly for that. So she popped the Kids in Motion segments in between their shows for years. That's how it found its way there. So it was in between um, their, you know, longer shows. There's like 30 minute shows. Was anything new filmed or was it just edited from what you had recorded for the tapes? No, they just took what we had. We just utilized what we had and played them for years. <laughs> So you released uh, additional products for Kids in Motion. I believe there was a book. There was uh, an album. Yeah. And according to my research, in the early 90s, you attempted to bring Kids in Motion as a full television show on PBS. Is that correct? Yeah. And Shelley Duvall was involved with that? Yes. Oh, my gosh. You did good research, Greg. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, how did that production go? Here's the honest truth. Mm -hmm. I got married. And I started a family, and my focus completely changed for those years. And so we were out there pitching it, trying to, even though we had Shelley Duvall's company, Think Entertainment, as our partners on it, and they were doing those great fairy tale theaters, um, I just, just, my focus changed, and I really was so excited to start my family. So I pretty much went that way and took a break from all of this. And then I'm going to just like kind of go to the uh, many years later. <laughs> yeah, seriously, I have three kids. So many years later, I was doing a little searching on the Internet and I saw that Kids in Motion had like a life of its own. I mean, I had continued to teach just locally where I live within my children's um, school hours. So like I was working while they were in school and then I was able to be with my own kids after school. Uh, and so then I just started to do some research and saw that it, Kids in Motion had its li a life of its own on the internet. And so I reached out to my old business partner who I mentioned to you earlier, uh, George Page. And I said, do you know what's going on? You know, do you see that Kids in Motion has its own little own life out there? It's like people are... Still, you know, um, the mute that's like gets great reviews on Amazon. I really didn't do any research, Greg. I was like so focused on what I was doing. I, I just was not checking things out in that um, regard. And then when I finally did, he and I decided, oh, you know, let's do a new one. And so we've actually come together and we have a whole new concept. It's called New Kids in Motion that we are, um, we were really excited. We're still excited about, but then the pandemic hit and there's not much money, you know, to be found to start a new production or to even do a new production right now. So it's kind of temporarily on hold, but we do have um, a whole concept written up about how we want to do the new one. The the uh, the new kids in motion when things settle down and can begin on that. What kind of form could we expect that to take? It's gonna be. It's gonna still have the heart and soul of what the original had, but there's gonna be many more um, kind of kids in motion like activities. So there'll be like those these music videos where children are. You know, each one is a separate concept that will kind of dip, delve into the uh, the lyrics and the movement expression. But then there's going to be other. Um, we see we see it being like short set, having short segments available to children, and then more long form where we kind of have a theme running throughout and different ways in which we can explore those themes with music and movement and poetry and. Um, little different activities. So, yeah, that's what it's going to be like. As of present, you also have, I believe you teach uh, adult classes in uh, yoga and meditation and those likes. You're currently like online based at the moment? Yes. And also still doing a lot of work with children. So, I have still been teaching in schools. I was in a lot of schools before the pandemic hit. Now everything is on online, but I actually, just yesterday, I did my first outdoor class with five children, all spread out with masks in um, 
um, somebody's backyard near where I live. And it was really sweet because people are just not able to socialize at all. So this was, this was, you know, safely distanced with masks. It was hard to like breathe with a mask on and instruct and, and, and vocalize so that everybody could hear me. But, but it worked and they were all excited and happy to be outdoors. It was, it was quite special. But yeah, everything is on, everything else is online. I have six children's uh, classes that are starting next week after Labor Day. Everything will be on Zoom and it's open to children anywhere. That's the beauty of this. You know, it's like there's so many difficulties um, that we're all having to endure right now. But now I'm, the classes I offer can, there can be children from, anywhere participating in if the time works you know if kids in motion is remembered for one thing what would you like that to be for its creativity and authenticity inspiring children to you know this i just feel it was it was very inspirational to just ignite their imaginations and excite them about themselves and life that's the end of my question. Is there anything else you'd like to share? I think so. It was really nice talking to you. Let me know if you have any other questions. <laughs> I will. I will follow up on this. Thank you so much, Julie. This has been a great conversation. Oh, yeah. My pleasure, Greg. Thank you.